The facial controls for Mad Candy 1.0 came from research and experimentation that was done to learn how to rig the characters Emo and Prug in Elephant's Dream. One of the things that we noticed during and after Elephant's Dream is that doing facial animation like this with shape keys, especially if you have fewer shape keys and no correction keys, and no keys for complex expressions, is that you get somewhat of a rigid facial animation effect. That's because combining shape keys together, especially at extremes, can result in kind of unsightly shapes. Um, and the reason for that is because the shape keys tend to add together. So if you have a key that moves a point to the left by one unit and another key that moves it to the left by one unit also, you want to blend those two. You probably want the point only to move by one unit in your head, but what happens in Blender is that it moves by two unit. So you get these very extreme motions. And to counteract that, uh, the rigger while making the shape keys will often try to limit the motions of the points and maybe compromise the shape of an individual shape so that multiple shapes can mix together. And so you might do things on some shape where you try to move certain points only and on one axis only. So they'll combine with another shape that has to move those po points on a different axis and yet another point uh, shape that moves points on other parts of the face. Now the result of this is that the shapes themselves tend to look somewhat rigid and localized and you get a motion that's slightly robotic for the motion of the whole face. Uh, there are ways to counteract that just using shape keys. However, they tend to be a little bit more complex and difficult to set up. Now when I went to uh, visit the Plumiferos movie project, I found that they were rigging faces in a totally different way. Instead of concentrating on the shape of the face, they were concentrating on getting nice smooth motion across the whole shape and bending it around like dough. And they were doing that using lattices. And that's what we did. That's what I did when I went and rigged the, the shape key layer for Man Candy 2.0 on layer 10. Now some of the bones you'll notice are in common with both layers. For instance, the eye tracking system the eyelids, the jaw, are exactly the same as the ones on layer 9. In fact, they're the same bone that is visible on both layers. But you'll notice that there are new controls, and far more numerous controls, to move the face around like putty. And you'll notice that these bones don't give such a precise shape for the smile, but a lot more of the face is moving together to create the shape. So here's the smile on layer 10. And here's the same smile on layer 9. The l smile on layer 9 is a lot more controlled and smooth. But the smile here is definitely a lot more dynamic. And also, I can tweak it in different directions if I want to. And the reason I could be so spendthrift here and get a lot of motion happening together is because I used lattices. If we turn on this layer, you'll see the total number of lattices used for facial control. The setup for these lattices is fairly simple. You have a lattice, say the head lattice here, and it has a number of hooks. These hooks are simply empties that can be used to move the lattice around, and they're parented to bones in the armature. So a really simple one is this lattice here that deforms the whole head. It's got a hook at the top and two at the sides and it allows me to do facial squash and stretch. By moving this up and these two bones are parented to this one so I can do things like rotate it and have the head sort of swing from side to side like that. And I can move these points out and fatten the head for a squatch. That's a very simple case of the use of lattices for deformation of the face. There are more complex ones, so there's this head lattice that moves the entire face around, like, like I showed. I'm going to hide it. I'm going to hide its empties. 
so we can look at the other ones. So then we have this lattice here, which is called the, the uh, face lat, MC face lat, which allows deformation of the face via a different set of empties. For instance, these allow deformation of the eyebrows. And these empties again are parented to bones, such as this one. However, there is a difference between this lattice and the head lattice. There's a little bit more complexity going on here because there's not just a lattice deformation going on. There's also a driven shape key driven by this bone. If we click on the mesh and we select the basis shape, we can kind of see this happening. I'll lock the basis and then I'll move this up. This is just a result of the lattice deformation. Now we'll click on the mesh and unlock the basis and you can see another wrinkle appear on the forehead. Basically what I did was I modeled a shape key that just wrinkled the forehead without moving the forehead up or down, the eyebrow up or down and I drove it by the motion of this bone in the upwards direction. The result of that is that it corrects and enhances the shape that the mesh takes from the lattice deformation alone. And because these shapes are fairly simple, mainly done as enhancements or addition to the lattice motion, I didn't have to be so careful at all with how they mixed and ended up having them mixed in a surprisingly pleasing way. So for instance, I have similar wrinkling shape happening when you move the middle brow up. like so. And finally, just to give you a, a bigger demonstration, if you really push this to the extreme up, this is how it looks with shapes, and this is how it looks without shapes. So it's quite cool to combine shapes and la lattice deformation on the same bone. And the shapes are set up in exactly the same way as they were for the for the shapes on layer 9. So here's another example. If I stretch these out for the smile, I should be careful not to stretch too much. The mesh has a different shape. If base is, un uh, is unlocked, we get a real smiley face. If we lock it, we simply get a very bland motion. And so the shape here is creating those little dents and wrinkles on the side of the mouth that really makes it look like a smile and not just, oh, the mesh is moving left to right. And there are a lot of different shapes going on throughout the whole mesh. Now to get more localized control over things, like for instance, when I wanted to deform this part of the lip, I created yet another lattice and deformed it by another set of bones. So I have these bones for my sneer controls. And the cool thing about doing things like this with lattices and not even locking your bones down is that you can even do things like rotating and scaling if you feel like it. So you can really do anything you want to get the shape looking right. Of course, this puts a lot of onus on the animator to really tweak the shape of their face, facial exp expressions as much as they want. And, of course, the effect of this on the mesh is that you have a whole lot of facial deformation happening, as we can see here. Now, all these lattices are parented to the armature, to the head bone, and therefore this shape deformation is happening after the armature deformation and not before it. And as we, we know from before, stack order is very important when you're doing armatures. There's also another shape, another lattice, right here for the eyes, and that has these bones as hooks, and allows you to swash and stretch the eyes around to really enhance things like takes and expressions. And while this may look unnatural when you do it in the static mode,
These squash and stretchy things, when done wisely and with the motion of the face doing other expressions, can really enhance your facial actions and make the face really compress into shapes. For instance, if you're doing takes or um, surprised angry faces or what have you. And so that concludes the new controls for the facial animation. I'll just go and run through all the different ones that are available. First of all, we'll hide all those lattices. So you have a, a nose wiggle control that controls the middle of that lattice. And you have these sneer controls here that control really that top lip lattice on the top and that allow you to kind of get a little sneery thing wrinkling up the, the, the flesh behind the nose especially good if you do it in combination with sneering the lip and then you have these squint controls that push that face lat up and down then you have bottom lip controls much like the top lip ones that let you move it around like putty and we've already seen the eyebrows. For some things, I kept over the controls from the old facial layer. So this uh, brow mid control comes from layer 9. And it's just there to s because when you scale it in, you get this nice wrinkled brow shape. And there was really no reason to change the driver for it. The downside of me having all these experiments in Mancandy 2.0 is that you really have a huge number of channels to tweak to do the facial animation. And so one of the plans for the future of Mancandy is to eliminate the layer 9 technique and refine further maybe the technique on layer 10 to end up with few controls that do a lot of motion on Mancandy's face for Mancandy 3 and make it faster and easier to do facial animation.